Hello wrestling fans, The Wrestling Wizard here and welcome to another video. And in this video, we're going to talk about Wind and Rotunda, aka The Fiend, aka Bray Wyatt, and answer a question that is going to keep on coming up. Will Bray Wyatt return to WWE, whether it be 2022 or 2032? Will it happen? Now, as you're aware, or not aware, if you don't follow this channel, you won't be aware, I'm a massive Fiend fan. Huge Bray Wyatt fan. Slightly obvious how much of a fan I am. I like, honestly, he got me back into watching WWE religiously. Because I've got to be honest, I've watched WWE for over two decades and I was falling out of love with the product. The Fiend Bray Wyatt gimmick came in and I was hooked. Glued to the product. I just think he's absolutely incredible. Creative genius. Just mesmerizing. When he was released from WWE last year, July of last year, due to budget cuts, I was furious, livid. And I'm sure many of his fireflies were also as well. I thought it was an absolute disgrace. The way creatively they destroyed his character, the way they treated him, again, allegedly behind the scenes, and also releasing him due to budget cuts. We know that was BS. We know WWE's bottom line is pretty damn good. They are breaking records financially. Their product is doing very, very well. Money, money, money. WWE, right? And they're making plenty of it. So to release someone due to budget cuts, when it's clearly not the case, and clearly it's someone that's been loyal with your company for over 10 years, 12 years in total in your company, that's a disgrace. And more in defense of, of Bray Wyatt at the time, I was like, he needs to get out of there. Hell no, would he ever come back to WWE. Go to AEW, go and be appreciated somewhere else where you can have the creative freedom, showcase your talents, and ultimately be appreciated. And, and that was where I was. And, and that's where a lot of people I feel were. Like they're very anti-WWE, especially at the time when they were releasing superstars left, right and center. To release Bray Wyatt was genuinely shocking. And I thought, there's no way he deserves that. There's no way that he deserves a payoff by losing to one RKO at WrestleMania uh, through a distraction by Alexa Bliss, who in many eyes felt it, it stolen his gimmick, which I think is unfair on Alexa Bliss, but I can kind of get their point. And I thought, no way. And there was a lot of speculation. A lot of this speculation was during his 90-day non-compete contract. Many people thought that that was going to be pulled short and he was going to shortly show somewhere else. And he hinted about this cult of Wyndham, which he'd actually hinted about many years ago, actually. Well, I say many years ago. A few years ago, he mentioned the cult of Wyndham, which I think originally was going to be some sort of podcast. But anyway, it came a light again. This cult of Wyndham was coming and many people were getting excited. He teased like this Japanese art came up randomly on his social media. So we seemingly like teasing a new character, we all thought, and we thought he's gonna end up in AEW. Allegedly there was contract negotiations either side, nothing materialized, and we didn't see him appear even at the end of his 90 day contract in another promotion. What we did see, of course, was him going on to Hollywood, working on a horror movie alongside Jason Baker, which I'm absolutely pumped uh, to watch, by the way. I hope there's going to be some like hints of new characters that he could be working with in the future in wrestling. Remains to be seen. You know how cryptic Bray Wyatt is. That'd be really cool to see that. And then, of course, we come full circle to today. My opinion, I've got to be honest with you, has changed. And I'll tell you why it's changed. Back then, I can see why, initially when Bray Wyatt was released, how angry he must have been. Livid, furious, just wanted to get out. And he was very vocal about his dis distaste, disdain, shall I say, for WWE and the treatment of his character, his baby, his gimmick that he'd worked so hard to create. Over time, I think he stepped away and looked at things logically and gone, impact, would it work? Yeah, it could, but I'm, I'm kind of almost a bigger fish than that promotion. Getting involved in Free the Narrative alongside EC3 and Braun Strowman was a potential. But again, if you're not fully sure about your direction in the wrestling world, do you want to just show up? You want that anticipation, you want to get people talking, so you want more of a build. So I can understand why he wouldn't have gone into that. 
In AEW at the moment is a seriously stacked roster and every week I watch AEW, I can't see him fitting in. And I don't mean that because it would, he wouldn't make it work. I'm sure he would make it work in AEW and I'm sure Tony Khan would give him the creative freedom he deserves, like 100% he would. But I can't see him like just joining the Dark Order or joining the House of Black, people have speculated. I really can't see it happening. And I don't see a place at the moment for him in that company. I, I just personally, it, it's personal opinion. It'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts and opinions, but I, I can't see it. Like they already have that dark gimmick in Malachi Black. And I, I don't know, like, yes, he could bring something new in, but the roster's massively stacked. AW are just pro wrestling, like to, to the book really, aren't they? They're really old school in their approach. Um, you look at the likes of Hangman Adam Page, when he first came in, he was that character you weren't sure of, you weren't really that invested, but they made you through storytelling and, and fantastic pro wrestling in-ring performances. They made you buy into that character and ultimately you invested so much into that character that you wanted him to be the champion. And of course, he elevated into that stratosphere and knocked Kenny Omega off his perch. Someone like Bray Wyatt, how does he fit into that mold? I personally couldn't see it working. Now, WWE are open to negotiation. Vince McMahon is senile as he can be. He's a businessman. And he's listened, I'm sure, to the WWE fans, especially the pro Bray Wyatt fans. And there's no way he's ignoring that. There's no way Bray Wyatt is ignoring that. He's got a huge connection with his Fireflies. Most of his fans, of course, are within WWE, his fan base especially the fans of The Fiend gimmick. There are a lot of people in AEW that criticised initially, you know, earlier on, that The Fiend gimmick. Do you go to a company that criticised your, your product in the past? I know it's little things, but it's little things like Wyndham follows WWE on social media. He doesn't follow AEW. Now I know that you can't really read into that too much, but would you follow a company you had so much disdain for, like so much distaste for? Like, would you would you do that? I wouldn't. I'd follow the rival company. <laughs> Just to stick two fingers up if I was that livid about my release. I think there's more to this than we're, make, we're making out. I think, I think we, d we don't know. Like, he could have been released and they could have just given him time just to clear his head get some space, think about his next moves in the future. And, and also like, there could have been some issues with him fulfilling movie commitments in Hollywood that he might have wanted to enroll in. And they might have not agreed to that alongside his current contract. They said, well, you know, if we release you from your contract, you can go and fulfill those roles and come back at a later date. But one thing we know for sure, the Fiend gimmick can't continue outside of WWE as it is. WWE own the likeness to that character, the own the fiend as a character. Bray Wyatt put so much time into that character and that gimmick, invested you know, financially into that gimmick as well, let's, let's not forget. It was so over and popular. It is still over and so popular. Like, it's, would you want to give that up? Could you give that up? When you've had time to step away and you think about things, could you negotiate? Vince will negotiate, it, it, surely. Imagine the pop of The Fiend returning at the Royal Rumble or The Fiend returning at WrestleMania or, or getting a big matchup at WrestleMania down the line or even feuding with the likes of Drew McIntyre, which allegedly were original plans. Like fans would be down for that. They'd just be, WWE fans would just want to see him back. And, and personally, I think he fits WWE the best out of any promotion. Just, it, it fits. WWE is a very different product to AEW and I hate it when they compare the two. To me, AEW is pro wrestling, personified. WWE is more of a show, more of a production, where they can work in those Hocus Pocus characters and, and it can work. The Fiend fits that bill. He really does. And, and that's why I feel like he, he could well return the WWE.
I wouldn't be surprised. I honestly wouldn't. And he never thought I'd hit, he'd hear me say that. Because I thought he'd be done and dusted in WWE. I did do a video a few weeks back about three ways The Fiend could return to WWE. So go check that out if you haven't already. But, but I honestly think, I don't think it's a work. I just think over time, things have changed. I think people have had a chance to calm down and think about what's actually best for business. And I don't want that to sound like the authority of 2014. But WWE are going to win by getting Bray Wyatt the Fiend back. Bray Wyatt, in my opinion, will benefit from coming back. But in the negotiations, he will need to have creative freedom like he did early on in the gimmick. And that's another point worth wrapping up. WWE, early on in the Fiend's run, Vince McMahon allegedly gave Bray Wyatt and his team creative freedom, literally to do what the hell he wanted. Like they gave him full creative freedom, or, or not full freedom, but a lot of creative freedom. Vince was like, I trust you guys, you work your magic. And it worked, didn't it? You look at early on, The Fiend, these Firefly Funhouse segments were absolute money. You can see the transition to when Vince got his hands on the product a little bit more. So all Vince needs to do is just trust Bray 100% deliver the goods and you know he will and if, if there can be a negotiation I don't even think money would be an issue I think Bray would would take a cut to better go in and, and do what he wants to do because he loves what he does he's got a passion for what he does and he's got a natural gift and he wants to showcase that and and I'd love to see him back to be honest with you I, I, I'll be pumped wherever he returns to to be honest with you but I honestly would not be surprised if he returns that's that's my bold prediction of 2022 What's your thoughts and opinions? It'd be awesome to hear them. Get down in the comments section, as always. I love hearing your opinions. Uh, we don't always agree on them. Um, nobody agrees 100% uh, on, on anyone else's opinion. And that's, that's why it's an opinion. But I honestly would not be surprised. I'm not going to say yes. I'd like to, but let's see. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be really appreciative if you can like the video, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in another wrestling video.